Welcome back to the channel, everybody. We're doing another structural plate test. Now we're gonna be focusing on CWB W471, but if you're familiar with AWS, this will also help you out. 035 MIG wire, 426 wire feed, 26.3 volts, half inch to 5 eighths stick out. Direction of travel, pushing. Inclination, zero to 15 degrees. Now I've done a whole bunch of videos on stick welding, and lately I've been getting a lot of requests for that MIG welding process. So if you're somebody looking to want to pass this test, stick around. We're going to go over settings, we're going to go over techniques, and we're going to go over tips and tricks. So if you're looking to challenge this test in any position, the first thing you need to decide is whether you're going to do it in short circuit or if you're going to do it in spray mode. If you're up in Canada, you know that we have to start at the flat position and we got to work our way up to the horizontal, vertical, and then we can go to the overhead. Your short circuit transfer is offered in four positions. You can do it in the flat, horizontal, vertical, and overhead. Now your spray transfer mode is only offered in the flat and horizontal. Your short circuit is done on quarter inch plate all around. Your spray transfer mode is done on your three eighths of an inch plate with a quarter inch backing. If you're looking for the short circuit test, we're gonna have to save that one for a different video. In this video here, we're gonna focus on the spray transfer mode in the flat position. So like always, we've got that half inch root opening. We've got a three inch by six inch square 90 and we got a three by six inch with a 30 degree bevel. Our backing bar is quarter inch by two inches. We like to go a little bit longer. We'll go about eight to nine inches. The standard tells us that our tack should be no larger than half of an inch from the edge of the plate in and we want to do that on all four corners. Now fit up and clean up is going to be super important on this plate. We want to make sure that we don't have any gaps in that plate and we don't want to cut this on the iron worker or on the shear as it can bow your plate and kind of give you a gap in that plate. Now this is why we put little tacks here on the end so that we can get a perfect fit up on this. You can see that I've removed the mill scale and I've ground down my backing bar to shiny material. Now today we're welding on Lincoln Electric's 300C Power Wave. It's a multi-process machine and we're welding on CV with an 035 hardwire. We got an 8515 shielding gas and I'm going to be running at about 425 wire feed speed and 25 volts. Now we may have to adjust that as we go along, but we're going to talk about that. Let's get going. All right, you know the drill. Get yourself some good PPE. No synthetics, obviously. Long sleeves, long pants. A good pair of gloves, safety glasses. I'm welding with about a shade 10. If your eyes are a little bit more sensitive, start at 11 and work your way down. Let's have a look at some of the tools we're going to need for this. Chipping hammer and wire brush. Although we're not producing a slag, if there's any silica or anything else that we need to remove, we still want to have this guy hanging around. Our wire brush, if we don't have a wire wheel, you are allowed an angle grinder with a wire wheel on it. You're just not allowed any metal removing tools. That includes files or any blades or anything that's going to remove material. And four of the most important tools that I always have whenever I'm going to do a test is a chisel and a hammer. And that's from removing any spatter. Any spatter you have in your test plate has to be removed. We can't weld over it. It's going to leave little pockets of black effusion. Next is to have something pointy, something sharp, where you can sort of dig out any junk or anything that's left over at the toes of your weld. And then of course, MIG pliers or any sort of pliers, because every weld that we do, we want to snip that wire off. We want to make sure we have a nice clean start every time. All right, so these settings may not work for you. You're not working off a Lincoln machine or whatever the case may be. So if they're not working for you, Find yourself a weld settings calculator online. You can find them online easily and get yourself a ballpark range. And then you can work off of that from there. But the biggest thing is to understand that relationship between your wire feed speed and your voltage. So if you're brand new or if you haven't been at it for a while, I'm going to suggest you go back to my other video on, I think it's seven things not to do for MIG welding. And that sort of goes over your stick out too long, your stick out too short, too low voltage too low wire feed speed, things like that. I've got my plate all set up right now. I made sure that I've got no gaps. My plate's nice and clean. I've warmed up. I checked my settings. One thing I do want to mention is that I did end up turning my voltage up to about 26 and a half. And I kept the same wire feed speed at about 425, 430. I was getting a lot of spatter, a lot of these little bee beads, and I wasn't quite going into spray mode. So our action plan is going to be start on our runoff tab, weld into this, stop, do our restart, finish this fillet weld, and then we can do our second pass. 
because this is a practice plate, we're not seeing all our stamps on it. Normally we would have the welder, a CWB stamp, the position, and then our coupons one, two, and three. Now in this case here, we're gonna have two stops and restarts. Your first one's gonna be on your square side. If you're right-handed or if you're pushing or dragging, that may change a little bit, but usually we're gonna weld to here and we're gonna stop. Now our second pass is gonna come to here and we're gonna do a stop right there. For this weld, we prefer to do it in two passes. We start on the square side, we put in our 5 sixteenths fillet weld, and then we come in, put our second pass, is what that does is it marries the backing bar, the square edge, and your bevel all in one. I've got all my tools right here next to me, and I'm gonna run that first pass. I've got my work clamp super close. I'm actually clamped right to my plate. That's gonna give me the best ground, the best connection on this. You wanna make sure that your whip is also nice and straight. You don't want any obstructions in the path of that wire. And we also want to clean the inside of this and make sure that that's nice and clean and not uh, obstructed by any, any spatter or anything like that. I'm going to chop that end off. I'm going to keep that nice and sharp. Now, another way of doing this is if you don't have your pliers is give yourself a little bit more wire. You can pull out on it and then you kind of wiggle back and forth and that breaks off nicely. So I've decided to push the puddle on this after doing some practice welds. It just worked out that my, my pass was coming out smoother. I was getting less spatter and I was just more comfortable with pushing it. So I've got my marker now that I'm going to put on my plate and we're going to run our first pass to that stop. All right, we're putting that first weld in no larger than 5 16 in size. Keep in mind, we're holding a half inch to 5 8 stick out, staying at the leading edge of that puddle and pointing directly in the center of that joint, dividing up the bottom and the top of that plate. There we go, there's a nice root pass. Got my stop. Now we're gonna work on doing that tie-in. Now here's where if you got any spatter, you wanna make sure you knock that out. Those will leave little pockets of lack of fusion. It'll, it'll definitely come up on the destructive test. All right, we're moving on to that tie-in. Remember, we're pointing and shooting keeping a bit of a closer stick out and moving out a bit faster in the crater area. You're going to want to point and shoot at the top of the crater, move out a little bit quicker, and then return to your travel. This technique will help with keeping the restart uniform to the rest of the weld. When we come to the end, we use the runoff tab and break the arc quickly as usual. Here you can see that finished product. I'm confident this will do the trick. I'm actually just going to bounce to the other side and I'm going to come in that other direction because I'm allowed to. I'm allowed to move around in the flat. Now, if you're welding this in any other position, any CWB plate out of the flat position must remain fixed at all times. Here we're on to our second weld. This one's a bit of a side to side weave blending into the previous fillet weld, the beveled side and the backing bar, marrying all three together. You must hold a consistent travel speed and stick out as we're weaving. We don't want to have any lower high spots when we approach our stop. Once again, we must stop quickly to give ourselves that crater. This finished product looks nice and smooth. It's got even ripples. Here you can see our restart. We're using the same technique as on our fillet weld side. In this arc shot, you can really notice the droplets coming off the tip of the wire. Once again, you can see this finished tie-in, nicely blended. That crater is completely covered and we got a nice uniform bead. Let's move on to our fill pass. All right, so I like to believe that the hard part is done now because we don't have to do any more stop and restarts and we're just filling. We're always gonna revert back to that square side and we're gonna start filling. Now this is called your fill. The first two passes here are called your root and now we're gonna fill. So I'm gonna do two more, one and then two. And then I'm probably gonna have one more fill pass and probably end up one, two, and three. That'll be right before I cap. If you're somebody that travels a little bit slower, you can do these fills in two passes, that's fine. And then once you get to your cap, I believe you must have at least two welds. Once again, we're holding a half to five eighths of an inch stick out. The important thing with this weld is that you don't wanna burn away that top edge of the plate. Let's keep those edges nice and sharp. You'll be thankful when it comes time to cap. Move 
moving on to weld number two of this fill pass. You want to overlap your welds to have this layer build a flat surface when you're finished. Keep in mind, we're staying at the leading edge of the puddle. I like to keep a bead width of about 3 eighths of an inch. Third pass is the final pass of this layer. Once again, we don't want to burn away the top edges of the plate. Keeping it sharp will allow you to keep the correct width when it comes time to cap. Okay, we skipped ahead a little bit and didn't show you the welding for that second fill layer as it was the exact same as the first one. Now we're looking at my fill pass. This would have been my second fill and I'm ready to cap now. So it might be hard to tell, but you can see here that I'm a little bit higher on my bevel side than I am on my square side, which makes sense because I'm going to revert back to that square side and that's where I'm going to start capping. And I'm going to run three to four passes across and I'm just going to bite that edge just to say that I came over so that I'm not too wide. When it's time to cap, got one, two, three, and four. This might end up in three passes. It may end up in four passes. It all depends on your travel speed. We don't want to go over this edge too much. We just want to bite these edges and just give it enough so that we don't have any underfill or any undercut. The first pass of the cap is going to bite into that sharp edge of your square side. Just enough to be sure you don't have any underfill or any undercut. Let's keep this one as uniform as possible as it's the final weld that we're going to see. With the first pass complete, let's aim the wire at the toe of that first pass, making sure the second weld overlaps the first one. The third one overlaps the second and the fourth one will overlap the third. So far so good. We have two more welds to go and we're finished. All right, we'll give her one last cleanup here, get rid of any spatter. Now, if you look closely here on my runoff tab, you're going to see there's a bunch of spatter, there's a bunch of junk, it just doesn't look great. And that's the purpose of these. Your weld is actually measured in that six inches. So this weld has to be filled to the full cross section. So this thing's looking good. I did it in four passes. I'm nicely stacked. I did get a little bit hot as we were going. You can see here I undercut it a bit at the, uh, at the end or at the beginning, I should say. So here's an example of having too much wire. You're getting a whole bunch of little bee beads kind of spatter all over the place. This would be very difficult to remove. The weld wasn't half bad looking, but with all that spatter, it'd be a questionable pass. All right, folks, so that was your 1G spray transfer MIG CWB structural plate test. We're going to bend this in a different video. We're kind of running out of time today. So just a few things to check in on before we sign off. You know what the number one thing is why people fail these tests? And it's not because of skill. It's because of nerves. So people don't practice, people don't warm up, or people just don't prepare themselves properly. They try to go in blind because they've done it before and they end up messing up. So breathe. Make sure that you can pass this. Do a couple bends, things like that. Listen to your inspector. That's probably one of the more important things on test day is to follow that direction, to follow that procedure. Your hold points, your stops and restarts on how to do this really has to be followed at all times. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of this. For those of you who've been asking for it, there you have it. Let's do another one maybe on the horizontal coming up next. And as always, keep those lenses clean.